In Murrindindi Shire, it's business as unusual. And right now, our local businesses need you. Every dollar you spend locally helps business owners support their family, other businesses and you. Shop local, shop Dindi. Visit dindidirectory.com.au. Welcome to Dindi Live, presented by Murrindindi Shire Council. Simulcast on UGFM in your local area. Dindi Live would like to introduce Brian Sillett. Well, good day, folks. My name's Brian. I'm, uh, some people might know me as the Akubra Hat Man uh, on UGFM. And uh, I thought today I'd give you a little something about the Bush Ballads, uh, some of our heroes, some of our stories from way back. So uh, let's get into it. As I sit here tonight by my campfire so bright I think of my folks years ago And I see all their names Written in the flame And their faces in the coals as they glow I remember with joy When just a young boy Helping my oldies on the land And the patience that they show On days when we rode Mustering to sell or to brand We had tea just on dark In the kitchen above And sat round the fire in the drum and it fell on the scene of the blade shearing team We played when they were still young And they paid us the scenes of the blade shearing team When their dads went shearing for a quid And they tell on the gun who showed those big runs And the ones they wish they never did Some worked all along And land that they own Fencing and clearing by hand And they suffered the pain Of times with no rain the dreams seem shattered and damned But they never complain Just rejoice when it rains Content in their own quiet way They were happy to be In the land that was free No matter the work or the pay and the women of those days deserved the highest praise For the many battles that were lost and were won And their grief was unknown as they suffered all alone The loss of a daughter or son Many nights were spent alone in a tent they called a home When their men folk were away for many weeks And the things that had to be done When the route was on the run They walk in miles to wash their clothes in a creek And they'd work late at night with a lantern for light Doing jobs to help along the way And they see the picking in each door When night give way to morn And they'd light the fire to start another day As I sit here tonight By my campfire so bright I think of my folks years ago and I see all their names are written in the flame And 
their faces in the coals as they glow. Well, that gives you an idea, folks. And uh, as I said, I'm Brian, and this is uh, Dindy Live from the Marysville uh, sta- uh, Stadium here. <laughs> and uh, um, it's just nice to bring a few, uh, a few balladeers to uh, all my country music mates out there and to anybody who's watching. So what we'll do, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about one of our, um, one of our heroes. We've had people like uh, Patsy Durack and R.M. Williams and so on. But this one is about a man called Nat Buchanan. <laughs> Storytellers of our droving days When many men stood tall Nat Buchanan stands alone As the greatest of them all Nat Buchanan is a legend When we speak of our round For he drove big moles of thousands Across all those famous tracks was the grandest of explorers and show what he was worth perhaps the grandest stockman to ever tighten up a girth his nickname of old bluey was the one that kind of stuck and it's held in admiration when we speak of pride and guts first cattle came to bowen down in 1862 With old Bluey as boss drove her To see the big mob through He rode from Aramac to Glencoe With 20,000 of the best And was first across the Barclay On the stock routes east to west He was the first to drove Across the Murrungai with stock where many men have perished in this land of scrub and rock. He blazed endless routes in Queensland to the Gulf and way up north. And explored mighty rivers from the coastline to their source. There are stories of his droving trips to the ordinal wave hill, the crossing of the Tanami really tried his skill. Old Bluey sought good country with his grass of sweet and green. And he rode to far horizons few men have ever seen. Let our younger generation remember what old Bluey's done. For he was the grandest bushman to ever see the setting sun. May he never be forgotten, nor this gathering be the last. And maybe if we gaze out there, we'll see him riding past. Let a younger generation remember what old Bluey's done. For he was the grandest stockman to ever see the setting sun. May he never be forgotten. Nor this gathering be the last And maybe if we gaze out there We'll see him riding past Just one of our famous uh, stockmen from way, way, way back Well, he was pushing a lot of cattle and uh, sheep around in his time over many years, and uh, unfortunately he's no longer with us, of course, but uh, seeing we've had uh, a few sheep being pushed around, we need some shearers in there. So I'll give you a shearer one. This is a story of an old gun shearer I met on a run years ago. It was in the big shed on the far western downs in a land where all cooler bars grow. He told me the story of his way of life How he battled many years for a crust And he walked all long day to start 
you shed through country of iron, stone and dust. He remembers the time when only a lad, how he learned to shear with a blade. And he sweated and toiled in the hot summer sun when it's 40 degrees in the shade. He told of the times when blades were phased out, replaced by a motor and wheel. Of the troubles he had with cutters and combs and the handpiece that was strained his field. He talked of the guns in the big sheds he'd run after a lifetime he'd been in the game. For a gun has great pride in the way he could cheer and was known far and wide by his name. A hundred odd shearers as growth so long boards in the biggest sheds way out of west and to ring one of these was a feed on its own for you sure to get some of the best he told of the times when blades were phased out replaced by a motor and wheel of the troubles he had with cutters and cones and the handpiece that was strange to his feel. Now the old mate is gone, where good shearers go. He's walked through his final pen door. He'll sit round the fire in his hut late at night reminiscing on the tallies he shorn. Well, there you go. There's a little bit about shearing. Well, you know, bush ballads um, are uh, part of what I do, and uh, I sing a little bit of Americana too, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to do the uh, bush ballads, but um, we're going to do a, a couple of more. Well, a song all about um, why folklore and uh, why our bush ballads are so important to uh, our history. This is called Folklore. <laughs> Many stories have been written about the folklore of this land and recited there in verse by poets truly grand and our folklore carries on with the help of someone's pen as we write our own bush ballads about our country and its friends You'll hear poets with their verses round the van parks of an eye While you eat your stew and damper by a firelight's glowing light You can hear our true bush ballads round the musters and big shows From the northern parts of Queensland to where the mighty Murray flows As you wander this great land to the country further out You'll come with friends and mates, that's what folklore's all about There'll be times there after tea when we sing these old bush songs By the flickering light of campfires where you feel you do belong You'll hear poets with their verses round the van parks of an eye While you eat your stew and damper by a firelight's glowing light You can hear our true bush ballads round the musters and big shows 
From the northern parts of Queensland to where the mighty Murray flows. You'll hear poets with their verses round the van parks of an eye. While you eat your stew and damper by a firelight's glowing light. You can hear our true bush ballads round the musters and big shows. From the northern parts of Queensland to where the mighty Murray flows. Bush ballads from uh, well, their stories take us right round uh, round the country, and uh, to some of our famous people over the years. But uh, this one, I'm going to throw it in because I wasn't expecting to do this one, so I'm going to uh, chuck this one in for you. My father was a proud man, his before him too. His pride and flag and country was surpassed by very few. I remember things he taught me as I sat upon his knee While I sat there learning his pride passed on to me It wasn't only family pride, it had more depth than that The pride my father spoke about, Southern Cross and Union Jack And he taught me things about my land and the reason I am free and while I live, I'll not forget these words he said to me. The red is for the blood that flows, a white for truth and right. Blue for how your mother felt when she prayed and cried each night. And I was proud to go and fight, but glad when I got back. From fighting that hard bloody war in the Southern Cross and Union Jack He taught me things like loyalty in country and in flag and Not to treat our banner as if a piece of rag It's been around a long time and it's flown high with pride and lower down to half mast to remember those who died. And he was proud to go and fight, not for wealth or fame, but for his country's freedom, this land from which he came. And his pride was in his banner, and the place where every flew. The Southern Cross. The Union Jack, the red, the white and blue. The red is for the blood that flows, the white for truth and right. Blue for how your mother felt when she prayed and cried each night. And I was proud to go and fight, but glad when I got back. From fighting that hard bloody war, Nathan and Cross and Union Jack. I know what my flag means to me, what does it mean to you? The Southern Cross, the Union Jack, the red and white and blue. To me it speaks of courage and the cost of life and limb. So I can have a free land to raise our children in. Now you want to change it all, our flag and what it costs. You turn your back on past years and those whose life was lost. I know it ain't very pleasant and pain. The Southern Cross, the Union Jack, the red, the white and blue. The Southern Cross, the Union Jack, the red and white and blue. Oh yeah, I, I, I said I'd throw it in and all right, muck up some of the words. That's all right. That's, 
that's fine. That's what bush ballads are all about. Can you imagine sitting around a campfire and um, singing those sort of songs? Just great songs. Okay, folks, well, there it is. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope uh, you tune in on uh, 6.30 on Friday night to uh, Dindy Live. I'm Brian and uh, uh, thanks for taking the time and having a listen to me. Until next time, bye for now, folks. If you like that, you'll love the Dindy Sessions, new songs from emerging artists across our Shire. Head over to the Murrindindi Youth Facebook page for more. Tomorrow, Dedicated 2 release their song, Out of Favour. Next, we chat to Alastair Mason about his creations. Well, good morning. Welcome to Dindy Live. Uh, my name is Alastair Mason, and um, I'm living in uh, Alexandra. Um, and I guess my work as an artist is um, has has gone on for quite a while. I, I have been um, painting and making things since I was uh, very young child probably. Um, as a young young person I got into making um, uh, scale models in plastic um, and uh, all that time I was doing a lot of painting and making things out of all sorts of different um, materials, plaster of Paris and um, always whittling in wood. Um, so I guess it all evolved from there really to where now I use, uh, um, I guess I'd call myself a multimedia artist um, using um, all sorts of different materials but mostly now wood and, um, and steel um, uh, and also using them in, in combined with each other um, to make all sorts of different things. How did you start your journey making art? Okay, so I, I guess I started to do this um, as, a, as a really young kid, um, but I, I, I think my memories of actually starting to work with my hands were probably when I was made to sit at my desk and was supposed to be doing my homework. What I had organised was that the uh, drawers in my desk um, had my paints in the top with my paint brushes and then the bits of the models that I was making were in the next drawer. I always had files open, always my books were open, but I clearly um, preferred to be doing things with my hands and um, um, it was much more fun. So that's really how I got into it, I guess. It's just And also just seeing things around me and also being visually stimulated, I guess. What drew you to work and live in the Murrindindi Shire? My ex-wife and I moved up here. She worked at the um, at the Alex Hospital as a physio, and um, so we basically came up here for for her work. Um, I'd been in the country for six months, I guess, and um, we both had wanted to live in the country. It was a you know something that I'd always really also wanted to do was rather than. Um, um, live in the city anymore, although that's where my work had always been. Um, it was, uh, um, yeah, that's how we really got up here. And um, I guess, yeah, things just happened from there. I had to learn new things and um, um, sort of developed from there. Sharing a workshop with Vitsa Kilstra, the potter at the time, um, on the corner of One Regarin Road in the Marunda. And, um, and he taught me heaps of things. So he was virtually like a mentor to me and um, encouraged me to try different things and learn, you know, my welding skills and things like that. So that's really how it developed. Are you influenced by where you live? I think my, my influences um, that come from this area would clearly be um, the natural part of our environment. 
and working with um, the outdoor education group and being fortunate enough to work um, uh, both in camps and also out in bush camps, um, I tend to spend a lot of time um, looking at, at the natural environment um, and, and the things that come up seasonally um, that I've started noticing after so many years of being out there. So a lot of the insects, fung the fung fungal plants, say for instance, trees and, um, you know, the movement of the creek through the, through the camps, things like that uh, um, are always influencing me. And then the idea of the um, natural environment with us in it. So um, my biomechanical sort of insects and things like that are that combination of um, what I see naturally, but how that would work as a mechanical thing. So I suppose, um, you know, the, the, the area itself is, um, there's always something to see. It's always changing the weather and the seasons. And so I guess that's um, where a lot of my more natural looking uh, work comes from, is definitely from what I'm seeing around me um, in this place and, and, the, um, and the bush around us. Do you draw inspiration from your community? I definitely think the people influence, um, you know, what you do. And um, <clears throat> I think, you know, my, as I said before, my huge influence um, working uh, with um, the Kilstras um, and, and just being, being able to trial sorts of different things and gain skills. Um, but... But since then, there are a lot of people that, that have given me helping hands in all sorts of different ways. And, um, and you draw off those people and, and their skills and um, there's, you know, learn off, off those things, so me yeah, mechanical things and, um, and, and leadership qualities from people and, and things like that. So yes, there's always people who are influencing um, in, your, in everyday life, and I guess that goes into, the, into after hours work as well. How do you work with scale? I think, I, you know, when I, when I was younger, things were always uh, a bit smaller. I loved the idea of scale models. Um, I think now with things like my insects, I like the idea of um, the combination of, a, of the, it's the, mechanical and the natural together so that steampunk look of of an insect that works by cogs or steam or some other form of of motion um, and so those might be quite big or bigger than they would normally be so they're not you know they're not to scale anymore um, so then to yeah they they get a bit of a presence about them i suppose but it also depends on what i'm doing i i I'd li i still like to work intricately even though some of my work is quite rustic i find that i can be a bit fussy with things so i like detail and um and i'll often spend time trying to find that detail um so in the smaller collages uh, uh, you know they they boxes or they um yeah contain ideas or or whatever so it depends what I'm, I'm doing. Yeah, I still enjoy painting, although, as I said, from the beginning, I've always been, I've always steered towards two-dimensional or three-dimensional things. So I've always really loved sculpture and the idea of um, something in its space. So, um, as I think I said earlier to you, I, I, yeah, big thing, I, I really enjoy the challenge of, of, of making something large um, but it also comes with its problems. Um, so, you know, it, it depends also, because I do a lot of commission work, that can depend on what people want as well. So um, the scale will, and the price, of course, is going to determine um, how big or how small something is. Does the intended location of the work influence how you build? Yeah, I think def you're definitely influenced, influenced by... A few, a few different things, but uh, some things surroundings is it will definitely, yeah. Some some things are going to look better in in some places than others. So um, the surroundings 
definitely influence how you're going to build something. You know, with the tree, you need to know where the paths are, you need to know where the gutters of the roofs are and how that's going to fit. Um, and in this case also, you know, who's going to move underneath it. Um, things like the rooster, that was um, sort of evolved in a way um, using the motorcycle frame um, as the main part of the body for the rooster. Um, that sort of dictated its size. Uh, yeah, the, the frame of the motorcycle dictated the size of the, or the scale of the rest of the, um, of the, of the rooster. Um, the rooster was also, you know, something to guard the chook house. You know, it's like that big, the big rooster that's going to look after all the little chooks for my youngest daughter. So, um, you know, and then other, other things, you know, if you're using a mix of, of wood or, you know, you're going to that extreme of making a lot of detail and, and carving or whatever, those things aren't going to live outside. And if they are, they're not going to last very long. So the choice of materials also then dictates what you, where it's going to go. Or, or you, you might not make something outside, you might not want to make it in pine, and it would rather be in steel because you know it's going to last longer. So it, it depends what it is, I think. Thank you very much for, for coming today. Um, I hope you enjoyed your little tour around. Um, as I said, I do work for the Outdoor Education Group. Um, on a full-time basis, and this is my um, effectively my hobby. Um, so, if you'd like to get hold of me, probably the easiest way, since I don't do a lot of social media, but is on Instagram, and that's at a Alistair Mason with an A um, nine seven five four. Um, so, if you wish to direct message me um, or have a look at what I do. Um, thank you very much, and have a good day. Thanks to Brian Sillett and Alastair Mason, and thanks to you for listening and supporting Local. Would you or your organisation like to be featured on our program? To register your interest, head over to murrindindi.vic.gov.au slash Dindi Live. Dindi Live, bringing the arts to you. In Murrindindi Shire, it's business as unusual. And right now, our local businesses need you. Every dollar you spend locally helps business owners support their family, other businesses and you. Shop local, shop Dindi. Visit dindidirectory.com.au.